communication is the glue of our relationships. It's how we connect. It's how we relate to each other. It's how we convey our ideas and receive ideas from other people. And it's really where we derive so much joy from things. But every now and then, our communication goes off the rails. There can be a break with a, a friend. There can be a misunderstanding. You can uh, feel like you're under attack or maybe a colleague at work criticizes you. So in this video, I'm going to talk about what sort of tactics you can practice and states of mind so that you can navigate these key moments with ease and with some grace. So we're going to go over how some of the principles from Aikido can really map well to a general approach at communication that can help smooth out challenging moments. <clears throat> the first principle that we'll talk about is what, what's called blending. And in Aikido, there's this idea of blending with an attack as opposed to opposing an attack. If someone's coming at you, you want to move and align with the attack rather than confronting it straight on. Now, how does this work in communication? As a general principle, I would say it shows up in a couple different ways. The first thing is beginning to notice what's the intention of, of the confrontation. If somebody's coming at you with a criticism, instead of just immediately responding to the criticism, beginning to get curious, why is this person saying this thing? What is their intention? And if you can begin to align with their intention and, and respond to that, I think you'll find that it can really smooth out the attack. So if somebody um, says, you know, you're, you're not doing well at this, the first thing is to, to really receive it and say, okay, well, hey, thanks for sharing that, say more. So you're not saying you agree, you're just, you're saying inviting more so that you can understand more of what's going on. So once you begin to intuit the positive intention or that person's outcome, you want to do your best to align your outcome with the other person's. There's no more powerful way of getting kind of in rapport with someone than aligning with their intention. Um, people find it almost irresistible to, to go in the direction that they're trying to go. In Aikido, you know, there's this idea that if someone's kind of moving in this direction, you, you really want to align with that and let them go in the direction that they're going. So again, instead of forces opposing directly, where the, inevitably there's going to be a collision, you want to reroute it and move in the same direction. The second principle that I want to talk about here is this idea of being centered. And in Aikido, very often you're talking about physical centering, you know, being balanced, being available to move forward, to move from side to side, to move back without falling necessarily. Being centered is a place of readiness. It's a place of um, being grounded, connected uh, to the earth. So in conversation, I would say being centered means that you're available in this interaction. Um, you're willing to receive, but not to, uh, it, it's not like you're giving up on your own principles. So, so for me, being centered means that I am connected to my principles. I'm connected to my values, to what I stand for. And, and I'm willing to stand for the things that are important to me. At the same time, I'm willing to hear other people out. One thing I'll check is if I feel like I'm under attack, I wanna take a moment, take a breath and make sure that I'm connected to myself and what's most meaningful to me. I don't wanna immediately cave and I also don't wanna immediately go on the attack. First thing is to check in with myself and make sure I'm nice and balanced and that I feel that I'm taken care of. If necessary, I may say to somebody, you know what, let's have a time out and then I'll come back and we'll resume this. Just because somebody uh, has a, a critique for you doesn't mean you have to respond in that moment. Part of being centered is, is controlling the space or at least controlling your part of the space. And, and that may be 
saying to someone, hey, I need a timeout. So staying connected to your center is a really powerful and healthy place to communicate from. So we talked a little bit about blending with an attack or blending with the intention or the outcome of that person and doing your best to align your intention with that um, and also staying centered. Now, another thing I wanted to talk about is kind of the principle of a, the principle of a dojo, a principle of, of having a space to practice. We're all caught off guard from time to time. And if, if you're listening to this just because you had a disagreement with somebody once, I would, I would say it, it's probably not worth the time to practice this on an ongoing basis. But if you're like many people, you, you may find yourself in these situations more often than not. And if that is the case, I believe it's worth, you know, it's worth practicing. Um, years ago, I saw a comedian and there was a heckler who started attacking this guy and the comedian just really lit up and started having fun with it. And what I realized was the comedian had been in this situation many, many times and had, had really prepared well for it. So if you're somebody who's in kind of high intensity meetings on a regular basis, or you have um, relationships with certain family members that are at high intensity, I think it's worth taking the time and, and practicing. A dojo is a safe place where you can practice something and you can slow it down in a safe environment. So if you know that there are certain types of uh, questions that always come up or um, certain critiques that are likely to come up, it's worth making a list and actually working through them and practicing different responses, practicing different ways of being there um, if I'm doing public speaking, I might, I might intentionally practice for the types of questions that are likely to come up. And once you do this a lot, you can actually have a lot of joy and fun practicing these things. And, and then you get to the point where you can welcome the questions, you can welcome the critique, because there's very little that will come up that you haven't anticipated or practiced. So First thing you wanna do is explore blending and this idea of really teasing out, okay, what is this person trying to do with this critique? What's their positive intention? Second thing is to stay connected to your center, to stay connected to what's meaningful to you, to your principles, and if necessary, ask for a timeout. And the third thing is to set up a context and find some friends to practice with so that you can anticipate and actually design your responses to these sort of high stakes moments. So I hope this is all useful and I encourage you to practice and have fun with it. And I will see you in the next video.